Welcome to another episode of the SCM podcast. Jack Bryce here again, and we'll be joined by Zach a little bit later. And today we're joined by Jared Musser. Did I say it right, Musser? I should have asked you. You, that you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. That's a good one. And uh, Jared, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good. Yeah. How are you guys? Doing well. And where are you calling from? So I am calling from Maryville, Tennessee, uh, just outside of Knoxville. So, yeah. Great. Well, Jared, start us out with how you ended up as a missionary in Scotland and, you know, give us the, the timing of things and if there's any story deciding to go on a mission or just finding out where you were going, anything like that. For sure. Yeah. So um, I'm the youngest of four and uh, my brother and dad both served missions. And so it was expected of me to go and, but I felt like it was the right thing to do. And, um, and so, yeah, I put my papers in and um, like, I wanted to go to like Japan or, you know, if I was going to go foreign and, you know, or South America, learn a language. I don't know. I was just kind of whatever. And then I got my call to Scotland, Edinburgh mission, and I was blown away because I was—I didn't even think about the UK. <laughs> so that yeah. was, was a really fun surprise. And uh, at the time, my sister-in-law, she was working at the MTC. And um, I think, she, I want to say she, she told me that night of like, hey, I, I think I hear a rumor that um, both the Scotland and the Ireland missions are combining. And I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. Like, but kind of just like, okay, like that'd be awesome. Um, and then uh, a little bit later after my call, uh, I was on a long drive with my family and uh, we decided to put in the, the, I don't know if you've heard of the Nashville tribute to the prophet, the Joseph CD. And um, there's a, there's a song in there where it's like talking about I met a young man in the corner of Dublin and, and uh and so I was like, oh my gosh, like I could, <laughs> like this could be my mission here. And so, um, and like the spirit just really confirmed to me, like this is where I'm supposed to be. And so uh, that was really neat. Um, yeah. So got to well, the end. Go ahead. What was the timing of when you, when you got your call? Yeah. Or so when you left, I want to say it was around. I can't remember exactly when I got my call. Maybe it was like March and I left in June or it might've been earlier then. I don't know. I can't remember the exact, that exact timing there, but June what year? of 2010. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, get to the MTC. Um, that was awesome in Preston to just have that very intimate, MTC experience, you know, just a handful of us, maybe like 20 to 30 of us. Um, so that was really cool. And then <laughs> drive and then get to the mission. And sure enough, both the Scotland and Irish missions combined. So I was now part of the Scotland, Ireland mission. And my first area was Cave Hill South, just outside of Belfast. So it was kind of just a shock for me of um getting that news of my oh wow it's called to scotland and here i'm going to ireland so that was really neat um and i could not have picked a better trainer so elder jared breakall so jared and jared as um one of the members called us <laughs> there so that was funny um All right, jared before you get too far into the mission yeah. we'll, we'll skip over oh yeah. we want to know what you've been up to since you've been home then we'll go back don't worry we'll go back I Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. Um, so since I've been home, yeah. Um, so I went to BYU, uh, met my wife, Michelle, and we got married. And we were in Provo for about four years. And uh, so, yeah, I got my degree in statistical science and um, got my first full-time job in Utah, but only for a few months before that branch shut down. So I was now out of a job. And her family is, is from New Hampshire. Uh, mine is from Utah. I grew up in Utah. And so we knew we wanted to be by family at that point. So I was applying to both jobs in New Hampshire and Utah. And um, sure enough, I got a job in New Hampshire. 
So we move out there about 2018. Um, and so I got a job at Comcast and that's what I am right now. Uh, nice. Sales analyst for them. And yeah, so uh, COVID hit obviously and now I'm remote. And we decided, um, our, and we have two kids. So a five-year-old and a two-year-old, uh, five-year-old boy and a two-year-old girl. And so our place was getting a little small in New Hampshire and housing was crazy in both New Hampshire and Utah. <laughs> and <laughs> this was about, let's see, 2022. And so we were looking at places and the Lord kept telling us Tennessee, we don't have any family or relatives here, but we did have a friend <laughs> that we were in contact with, but we felt like the Lord was, was guiding us here. And so this is where we ended up is in um, Maryville, Tennessee. And uh, yeah, so, and that's, and I, I can be remote anywhere now for my job and, and we're doing great here. So we've been here about, let's see, about a year and a half coming on. So cool. So awesome. Love to hear that. Yeah, that's fantastic. All right, Jared. Now you can go back to Scotland. Jared and Jared. Yes. <laughs> Jared and Jared, back where we left off. So, um, and what was funny is that, um, and awesome at the same time that Jared, my companion, he's very short. So, and I'm about six feet tall. So there was quite a height difference there as my trainer and he is an awesome human being and just, I could not have picked a better trainer uh, if I hand picked it myself. So, mm -hmm. um, and really just what I needed because I'm more of a introverted person and, you know, not really get out of my shell very much. And so obviously mission just throws your whole world upside down. Uh, you have to get out and meet people and talk to people and <laughs> and uh so but i could not have picked a better first area um really amazing people there um like my first i remember my first dinner appointment <laughs> was with these northern irish people awesome investigators that <laughs> I, <laughs> I had to be like what did you just say <laughs> Like I just could not believe how fast they were talking, and just, I, it just, and I grew up in Utah, you know. <laughs> so we, we get it, Jared. I mean, it's similar yeah. for it doesn't matter what part you, of the UK or Ireland you're in. It's it's about the same for us Utah kids getting over there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that, <laughs> it was really awesome, um, and we actually had awesome success there so we taught so there was a referral actually from uh uh in scotland they like this old guy he had a he had a grandson that lives in northern ireland with his mom and so he's like he wants to be baptized like he wants to learn so that was an awesome like first convert there I was, so i could like you know just get to the basics of teaching and so i was like this is great <laughs> um yeah. And uh, let's see. So, yeah. And then also baptized um, Bernadette, the people that I had my first dinner appointment, really my first exposure with. So that was really neat, too. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> really, that's where I, my first area was I came to really love the European chocolate because they had in this flat. <laughs> like a whole cupboard stock full of Cadbury chocolate bars. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Just because of all the members that have given them chocolate. <laughs> so I was like, "There's where my addiction started." <laughs> I guess that's a good problem to have. Yeah, <laughs> as long as you can keep it within reason. I didn't even like chocolate till the mission, and then really? I, I came home with the same addiction. So that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Like it became such a problem that I, when I tasted American chocolate, I'm like, this is kind of gross. <laughs> so I was like, mom, I like, I like, you can send candy, but just don't send American chocolate, please. <laughs> yeah. you, anyway, you had better places to get it. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I was there for two transfers, um, and then I was I got called to be an heir Scotland. So nice. first exposure in Scotland, which was awesome. But yeah, those ferry rides back and forth, um, I had quite a few of them, and were about two and a half hours, and I had to get a little motion sick. So, and then you had the the like hour or two from Stranraer to the mission home. Um, and so it was, uh, it was a long travel day for sure, <laughs> but yeah. And then, so elder Bauman had a German companion and he was awesome. Super funny, uh, really positive guy and, um, really awesome. And then I got, uh, he, I was with him for six weeks and then elder Foster at Tyrell Foster, he served in the Scotland Edinburgh mission and finished off his mission where he started, which is an heir. So he got to spend his last six weeks, um, or actually three months, sorry, I have it here. And um, and that like that was probably my favorite time of my mission was like in air at that time. Just me and him really clicked. And what was funny is I had an exchange with him in over in Northern Ireland. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if I want to be his companion. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, just, just some of his quirks, I'm like, yeah. And then, of course, that's who I get as my companion. I'm like, well, here we go. <laughs> but we ended up clicking so well. And it was some of the best success I've ever seen on my mission. So super grateful for that. Um, and so we were able to, and a funny, a cool story that we had with him was, he he was like elder like let's pray just to know like which area we should track in and so like i felt like really strongly about this one area and he was more familiar with the area because he had served there before and he's like this is really sketchy but i guess like <laughs> let's go i guess we're going and he trusted in the spirit there and so and you know at the very very end of our tracting there in that area. I can't remember exactly what part of air it was, but um, sure enough, we find this little lady and she, like, she was just surprised that we're smiling and talking about families and she invited us over and uh, we were able to teach her and um, a son and a daughter. And they were so golden and very positive and um, really neat. We got to, baptize them and the day oh and and like kind of rewind a little bit uh elder foster given me a blessing um just to be like we were just he just had a prompting to like hey let elder muster give you a blessing and then he gave a blessing to me and i wrote and i looked through my journals as I was preparing for this. and it said, like, I wrote down that he promised that there are specific families for me to teach. And so I was like, wow, that's really cool. And cool. this is one of the families that, that we got to baptize, which was really neat. And the crazy thing was, is the Sunday that Elder Foster, it was his last Sunday on his mission. And we, and it was the day we confirmed this family. <laughs> A family walks into church on their own accord. Like we we didn't have them as investigators or anything. And they walk into church and they're like, we think it's time for us to get to a church. And they lived like right around the corner from the church. Wow. <laughs> wow. I was, I was <laughs> that I was never like, happens. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like thinking Europe missions are gonna be really hard and finding people and already like my second area, like this happens. <laughs> It's like that is a huge miracle. So really powerful experience. And then uh, Elder Chris Curran, he came in and replaced Elder Foster for six weeks. And we taught and baptized the Kennedy family. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Bishop Gilardi. Have you heard of him? Yeah. Oh, yes. He's a legend. Yeah. <laughs> he was awesome. Oh, my gosh. Really fun to be with him. And so energetic and has that thick Scottish brogue and you know <laughs> just so cool and oh man the memories of Stobbs the baker I don't you knew about yeah he owns a bakery and 
so he'd let us eat like every day, like have a free meal every day. And, um, so that was awesome. And Did you have a certain thing that you'd always get when you were there? Um, I tend to lean towards like the breakfast sandwiches. So yeah, those nothing, are nothing too adventurous. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't go outside the box much. So it's all and good. everybody's like, Oh, the UK food is so bland. I'm like, this is great. Meat and potatoes, like bring it on. <laughs> awesome English breakfast. Like I loved that. Like that yeah. was awesome. So I love it. Yeah. Um, oh man. And just, I wrote down another, I had to learn how to drive a manual car <laughs> on my mission on the other side of the road. <laughs> and <laughs> I get stressed out pretty easily. And so, uh, that was it. That was quite an experience there. Um, <laughs> had some scary moments for sure, but <laughs> and we didn't really have GPSs readily available. Elder Bauman, he had a GPS, but when he left, like me and Elder Foster were just kind of flying by the seat of our pants a little bit of just like <laughs> where we're supposed to go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I had to get comfortable with that. Um, and you, you guys must have had the, an upgrade of uh, technology from our time frame because that big paper map was on the hood of our car and we're like, we got to get here. Where do we need to turn, Elder? And, and yeah. like you said, you're you're driving this way with the stick oh shift with your left hand. It's it's a different experience altogether. In those box on the Marinas, man. <laughs> so good. <laughs> And again, count yourself blessed that you did it in a Mariva. I mean, I had to learn in a Corsa, which, you know, those <laughs> those little machines are gutless as it is. But but you know, you did you you figure it out and then it becomes exactly what you think about all the time. Yeah. It was kind of crazy. And then coming back home, I had a, I also had a manual car that I, I got and I, I just had to like keep telling myself to like, okay, I have to be on the other side. Like <laughs> it was just the most weird experience in the transition there. So yeah. that was exciting. <laughs> but for yeah. those of us who drove manual cars in high school, having to change over, like knowing how to do the, the, the clutch was fine, but like the gear pattern being the same on the opposite side was, it was screwy initially. Was You're just, you're just like, what is going on? Like, it was just a whole different feel to how you drove the car. But, uh, yeah. but again, you, you get used to it. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> so my my parents, they came and picked me up at the end of my mission. And uh, my dad, he he's the one that had to drive because of the rental car agreement. It, <laughs> he had to drive because I wasn't old enough or something. And so he's like smacking his hand against the, <laughs> as he's trying to <laughs> shift with his right hand and he's smacking it against the door. <laughs> good times <laughs> oh man yeah that seen that before too yeah <laughs> i love it no well, anyway yeah <laughs> so good good times in air i was i was there for six months so good chunk of my mission and nice. really grateful for that time there that was awesome how many were in the kennedy family so let's see um i think there were th two or three kids yeah Oh my gosh. So, yeah, it was that's uh, incredible. That's, that's a the dream family. right there. It is. A family yeah. of five walks in the door and says, we'd like to join. Uh, unbelievable. Done. Like, I was like, no way. And our flat in air, I don't know if you know, but it's like right across from the church. So it was like <laughs> the easiest appointment to get to and like no stress. And yeah, <laughs> unreal. <laughs> a slam awesome. dunk. You yeah. probably went, why didn't we chat the doors along <laughs> the, the road by the church like months ago? Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. So, yeah. Awesome experiences there. And Elder Kern, yeah, he was an English missionary and he was he's super funny. And I I laugh a ton. And so, like, I just got along with a lot of my companions. Just I just laugh all the time. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, and the senior couples in our mission in that same area, uh, they they were teaching an investigator as well because like she's like I I can't be taught by the elders so and she insisted that the senior couples teach herself. I was like okay, but like she was baptized and confirmed and and right before I left 
So that was cool to see too. Nice. So, awesome. You know the Langs at all? Uh, yeah. ring a bell. Okay. Anyway. That's cool. Love it. That was yeah. the couple that was there? The McDowells. Okay. Um, okay. Very nice. So, and then the transfer call came, and I'm back to now Southern Ireland. So I kind of did a zigzag there <laughs> uh, in Waterford. So, nice. and I got to go ahead. I said, that's great. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, Elder Bjorn Andersen, so from Sweden. And he was actually, I was only his companion for like a week, and then he had to e move out. And Elder Adam Christensen uh, from Utah, he transferred in, and I was with him for two transfers. Nice. So, yeah, super awesome guy. Um, uh, that flat was like the best flat I've ever stayed in my mission. <laughs> it was like we were living in the penthouse, it was like the top floor, and the ceilings were super high. And I, I was like, this is in the mission budget. Like, I was, <laughs> yeah. like we got to plan in these high windows. Like we got, you know, look out at the street and the city center and uh, yeah, but small, small place Waterford. And, and we did have a car and we had to drive out in the middle of nowhere to see members. And <laughs> so that was awesome. Um, and another memory from there is, uh, we had a couple of awesome investigators um, that were like college age and um, just really incredible experience. Uh, and really where I came to know like that you can get, you can go to general conference and receive answers to your questions. And cause, and that's where we were taught to promise, promise our investigators. And so we did, and they were, um, we, you know, we we know we were, they were going through their challenges with like word of wisdom, and and it was just incredible how we promised that you know if you go to general conference, then you'll receive answers to your questions or like help what you need. And I couldn't believe like a ton of the talks were like right to them, and I was like, this is yeah again really neat experience with cool. yeah, but um. And it was fun because we got to be with the senior couple there and it's in a branch in Waterford. So very small amount of members. So we just gathered at the senior couple's apartment and <laughs> watched general wow. conference there. <laughs> it just, just us, the, our investigators and them and the elders and sister Stowers, they were so awesome. Like we were, we just got really close with them. Um, they took us some fun places on P Day. Um, yeah, so somehow the senior couples always know like the best places to go. Like, oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Same. Very true. Same. Yeah, for sure. And I forgot to mention uh, Brother McGee and Air. He took us to a ton of places on P Day, <laughs> like <laughs> Castle Ruins, and he he would love to do that. Take the elders around and. So that was fun. Forgot to mention that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, next I got called back to Scotland in Perth. And Perth, nice. Yeah. And I got to be in a trio for a while. So Elder Zeke Hobbs and Paul Cloward. Uh, Zeke Hobbs is from England and Elder Cloward is from Utah. So really awesome to be in a trio and definitely different dynamic there. Um, and I came in like the first day and they already had like five baptisms scheduled. So that was really neat. And like, we have this awesome teaching pool, but also like helping, you know, recent converts with the member discussions. Um, and we had awesome breakfast appointments even. So once a week, we'd go to Brother Rudder's house, and he's this old guy. Um, he used to be a sailor, and he would tell the exact same story. Like, no matter what we were teaching, he'd always bring it up. <laughs> and he talked about, like, how we were on this really harsh seas, and the waves were 
way over my head. And even the atheists were on their knees praying to God. <laughs> but he tell it like so slowly and like just, it was just so nice. And so he was fun. That was really fun. And he, his frying pan, like he did not clean it. So we were kind of oh, like risking our lives. Terrible. <laughs> Eating breakfast like eggs and bacon off of that thing. It's where the flavor comes from. <laughs> I know, right? So true. Oh <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Yesterday's <laughs> bacon is in your pancakes, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh geez. Yeah. But it was so fun. Um that was a fun memory there in Perth. Uh yeah, and uh, let's see. So I trained uh, Elder Barney, Elder David Barney from Utah. Excuse me. And so he was uh, trained him for two transfers, uh, became a district leader, a really awesome missionary there. Um, yeah, and spent about another six months there too. And uh, President Ferens, it was a branch as well. Um, so the branch president there was really awesome um pretty recent convert there too i want to say he was only a member for a few years before he got before he got called to be a branch president so that was neat to work with him cool um yeah and i got super sick like a couple weeks there and i think it was like some form of tonsillitis where i was just like bedridden for a couple weeks like sores in my mouth, just like feverish. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, it took me forever to get over that. And I was, I wonder if it was those breakfasts. <laughs> yeah. As long as you weren't kissing the, the local girls, I yeah, might have no. been the breakfast. Okay, that's good. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was good. Um, yeah, then I got called to be a zone leader in Clonsilla, in uh, just outside of Dublin. So yeah, you can notice this pattern. I'm back and forth. <laughs> yeah, crazy, yeah, pretty wild. Uh, Elder Ty Gardner from Colorado. Uh, he was one of the most positive missionaries ever. Uh, everyone nicknamed the area Clongeria because there's a ton of African people there. Um, really big community <laughs> there, and we baptized quite a few Africans there, <laughs> so that was awesome. You know, just a different culture, it was almost like you know, I got sent to Africa for <laughs> a couple transfers. <laughs> so, we even got some nicknames, some African nicknames. Mine, they called me Chidia Berry, like I guess, as God is merciful, <laughs> just kind of silly. Yeah, <laughs> the name nicknames there. Um, but man, so, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, I told you I was an introvert and I get, I worry a lot for those who know me. Uh, and so I get really stressed out. So as part of the, being a zone leader, you have to like plan out the moves and like when, like if elders are traveling, you know, back over to Scotland, you have to make sure they're with, you know, they're a companion, a traveling person or make sure everybody's together. And that really stressed me out. That, that did a huge number on me. <laughs> uh, very, yeah. So I've spent days just trying to plan out and coordinate all of this. So that was a, a memory that I had of Clonsilla. And um, my driving troubles were not over. This is where they kind of escalated <laughs> in this area. So a um, couple of crazy stories. So. We're going to pick up some elders from the train station in Dublin and or is it the bus station? I don't know. One of the two. And <laughs> we go to this spot where I think like, OK, like I think we can just throw hazards and I think we're good to just we're just going to go pick up the elders and then come back. And we go to check in the train station. They're not there. So we're like, oh, we better go back to our car. And <laughs> we. We get close to our car and we see a tow truck hooking up everything to our car. And I'm like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh no. And I'm like, we're here. Like we were running, like we're here. We're 
and it's like, sorry, I'm taking it to this address. You better get yourself over there and pay the fine, call this number. And so like stressing out crazy, you know, like there, um, <laughs> just a oh, wild man. experience. And so we had to like walk a few blocks to get to it. Like it was just a few blocks away, but still it was like so stressful and trying to pick up these missionaries. And yeah, it was, it was a wild ride. And I don't know if it was that same night or different transfers where we had to like coordinate a bunch of missionaries and give elders and sisters rides. But um, I, I had taken a wrong turn. And so I go to do a U-turn and these roads are not very big. And I was kind of in a hurry because we're in the city center, super busy area. And I go to do a U-turn and totally wrecked into the curb, like gashed both of the tires. Like it was bad. <laughs> and uh, I can't believe like they still let me drive in the mission <laughs> for that. <laughs> like I was so at, I was like having a panic attack. I'm like, <laughs> like I cannot believe this is happening right now. And there's two brand new sister missionaries, like bless their hearts. <laughs> like, holy crap. And um anyway. Change those, the tires, whatever. Go ahead. Those curbs were rough, though. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like a traditional rounded curb like you have in Utah growing up. Like those things were like razor sharp, and you yeah. hit those things, they did some damage. It was, it was pretty, and that's probably why they stress don't hit the curb in your driving test, you know, <laughs> because apparently it's going to damage your car no matter what. So, yeah, I well, remember I that. Didn't, I didn't have to go through the driving tests in the uk or, or ireland because right. i guess of the rule with like if you switch back and forth like your your it resets US lines, it's reset so yeah i never yeah went through the rigorous training to get a license there so and when we were in the mission they used to talk about it they used to say we could haul people over to ireland get their passport stamped and then get it reset but they said that was too expensive and i said that doesn't make any sense at all, but whatever. <laughs> so many of us, like myself, did get my UK driver's license and took plenty of driving lessons and learned all the ins and outs of how to drive in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Not uh, me. I threw the keys to Zach. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. man. So good. So that was fun. And then, yeah, that was with, yeah, Elder Gardner. And then, um was he with yeah two transfers and then elder hobbs came in so i was with in a trio with him before in perth so that was fun to have him come and be his own leader with me for a transfer um, yeah and then um so yeah <laughs> then my next area was in sterling scotland so again back to <laughs> scotland <laughs> And I'm very familiar with the long travels of, you know, <laughs> the ferry and the bus from Stranraer and everything. So. <laughs> that makes more yeah. sense now. Thanks for clarifying that, Jared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Elder Blake Johnstone, um, got to serve with him for about a week or two. And then uh, Elder Nesser. Elder Nick, Nick Nesser, he he had to transfer in with and be with us, so we were a trio. Um, and it was cool. He he got called to speak Mandarin um, in Edinburgh. So and so we when we went out finding, like he'd stop Chinese people all the time, and and that was really neat. So wow. And uh, he'd always just be like, "All right, let's go to the university because there's tons of students there and." And so that's where we that, where we spent most of our time finding, which was fun. Um, and again, as I'm sure you've heard, the the Sterling Castle, like a 15 minute walk from our flat, just to walk up there, and we got free access because we lived within you know 15 minutes or so, or we were local to the area. That's cool. That was awesome. That's my favorite castle. I want to say, yeah. So. Um, and then the William Wallace Monument, we got to see that. That was really neat. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, and of course, I'm the only person that can drive because they didn't go do the whole back and forth. So 
out of the three of us, I they had to deal with my driving, and that totally <laughs> gave me a hard time about everything. And <laughs> so that was kind of a struggle. I'm like, I can't just hand the keys over. I have to be the one driving. <laughs> the Lord must really want me to learn <laughs> better driving skills, I guess. <laughs> Probably that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, really neat area. The bishop there was from uh, South Africa, so that was cool. Um, yeah, really neat environment there. Um, and then my last six weeks on my mission was in Cumbernauld, so the only time where I didn't zigzag. <laughs> um, yeah, Cumbernauld in the Glasgow zone. So Elder Jeremy Smith, he is the one that killed me off. Um, yeah, really great families there. Um, the McGregor family uh, was really awesome and welcoming to us. Um, we taught a younger boy, a relative of theirs. And so it's kind of neat to like the bookends of my mission to teach like the younger generation. I don't um so that was really neat and he really wanted to get baptized but his mom was like wait you got to wait till you're old enough to make your own decision so unfortunately we didn't get to see him get baptized but um it was still neat that he was still like really anxious too and we taught him yeah so and then my parents picked me up and and we toured scotland and ireland for a week or so and flew home Awesome. Wow. What a journey. <laughs> yeah. He really did zigzag back and forth. I think everybody else we've talked to who had the opportunity only made one trip across. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. It was really fun, like hearing the accents back and forth, too. It was like I'd get used to one, like really fun Irish accents. And then, like, as I'm going back to Scotland, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Just like, Different style, different transitions, and yeah, it was fun. Yeah, the amount of time that you spent on the ferry from was it from air or from Stranraer? Uh, Stranraer. So okay. the amount solid. of time you spent on there was about the the time it took for some of us to take a single single <laughs> way to from Aberdeen to Orkney or from <laughs> Aberdeen to to Shetland. I mean, you spent some time on that ferry, so I can understand why it wasn't your favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I'm really trying to like look for times of fondness there and, you know, <laughs> but it was a lot of travel. It was a lot of travel. Yeah. It was fun though, being a zone leader in, uh, in Clones Hill, because when we'd have like zone leader council in Edinburgh, they would fly us out. So that was wow. cool. It's like, we take a, like a short 45 minute, you know, flight to Edinburgh. And <laughs> so that was fun. And yeah, that, that. that makes a big difference, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you you had the same mission president the whole time, right? The, I did. President Griffiths. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any specific memories of the Griffiths? Yeah. So <laughs> a funny memory is when they they dressed up as fishermen and they <laughs> they brought out their all their fishing gear. He's he's big into fish and in the fishing and, and you know and talking about finding people and like leaving your line in the water and <laughs> it's just a fun analogy that i thought of um let's see so uh the last the last night in the mission home experience was really special uh definitely a powerful testimony meeting but i remember um sister griffith saying uh we were going to sing God be with you till we meet again. And she was saying like, when you, when you read these words, like think of, think of like your heavenly mother, you know, giving you these words as she's sending you off to earth. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> so just really, like, she was so tender and she was an awesome mission, pre like a wife of mission president. And, um, but yeah, I was at first, I was really intimidated by president Griffiths. Like he would, He'd like stare into your soul. Like he was very, <laughs> he would just pause, he'd take long pauses and just wait for you to respond. And like he would just really in your eyes. 
um, yeah, he's awesome though. Like I really grew to love him and um, yeah, <laughs> and get along with him. And, and I still remember like being like on my first uh, in my first area. Like he's he's like let me let me take a look at your uh, planner, and I'm like. I gave him this look like, oh boy, like <laughs> stressing me out. And he's like, you have a look there, Elder. Like, <laughs> look, everything okay? <laughs> so, yeah. Don't anyway. judge every blank space, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like I doodle on a couple pages or something, you know, stupid like that. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Starting off in the mission. But yeah. Um, really awesome. And I, I just really love seeing, I don't know, like uh, these authorities are like, they're real people. And like, it made me respect the 70 more, you know, cause I always like thought all oh, the 12, the quorum of the 12, they're like the best people. And who are these quorum of the 70, you know, <laughs> but uh, just like, just seeing like, these are real people. Like they've had, like he was talking about how when he was elders quorum and in, in the Elders Quorum presidency, getting call after call, you know, like, I need your help to move. And, <laughs> and he's like, I thought I, like, that was really hard, but then becoming a bishop and like the responsibilities that kept adding on there. And just like, you could just see that they're just, they're normal people, you know, just like us. And I don't know, like, I just really grew to love them. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Love it. That's great. So you mentioned, of course, your companions. Is there anybody else you want to shout out from the mission while you're on here? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, James Stoughton. I don't know if you know him as a missionary. I, he's actually, he lives in Maryville uh, in my ward right now. And he, he, he served in the Scotland mission. So like, interesting. Yeah, he's okay. awesome. Yeah, I, I, he, he was before my time, but so I send, I send him our way. Yeah, definitely. He's on my list, so tell him oh. to check his uh, his Facebook messenger. He probably dropped a message in his box. If not, have him email us or check out our website. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and Tyrell Foster should get on here. I want to hear like his his mission stories too. <laughs> yeah, my my companion. So. That's awesome. Cool. One thing that you can help us with too, Jared, is do you still have your roster list that you got at the end of your mission? Uh, if you do, if you do, send it. If you don't, don't worry about it. We'll figure yeah, it I out. Got, I got the one in the beginning of my mission. Yeah, 2010. Okay. So, because I know we, that's how we got in touch with you. Is you ended up on one of those rosters and. I'm looking through all of our past guests. You are the youngest missionary we've talked to in our generations of mission, which is pretty cool. Um, so for you to be entering the Scotland Edinburgh mission in June of 2010, you were probably literally the last group called to that mission. Uh, yeah, I think I was. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's pretty amazing to consider. That's that's pretty cool. But yeah. uh, as a result of that, we don't have a complete list of all the missionaries that you served with. And I would imagine that your list eventually became combined with those that you served with in the Ireland mission as well. So if you track it down, great. Uh, if not, we can communicate off of this, but uh, it'll help us get in touch with more people as we continue in this journey of talking to people about their experiences in the Scotland Edinburgh mission. And obviously we love hearing the, the tales of people that served in the Scotland Ireland mission as well. Yeah. We'll do, yeah. Yeah, this was a neat opportunity to like look through my journals again and I don't know, like think of the memories that you don't normally think about for, with your mission. And so, yeah, this was neat. That's good. You're not a dinosaur like us, Jared, where we're <laughs> yeah. approaching 20, 25 years away from the mission. I mean, you're still fresh, but uh, <laughs> I'm curious to know what your experience was here in that announcement for the temple in Scotland. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was over the moon excited and just couldn't help but think of the members there and how like excited they were. And I still remember like, like in air when they would take that trip, like every month to just, you know, five hour drive and like they all go together and stay the night there. And 
Yeah. Just like these awesome people that can now have a local temple. Like that is, that was incredible. That announcement. Yeah. I, I was like floored when I heard that. It's like, that's awesome. So cool. Now yeah. the other question I have is the mission or the people from the, the Dublin area, would they just take a ferry across like to Liverpool and then go to the yeah. temple in Preston there too? Yeah. So, and some of them in, uh, I remember in Southern Ireland, I was actually on the ferry, I believe one time. And I like, I, one of the members that I recognized were on there and they were taking a temple trip. And I think they, they went to the London temple. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Or, or no, I think they said the London temple was like their assigned temple because they were in Southern Ireland, but they're like Preston was closer <laughs> or something. And so that's what they would wow. do. Yeah. Just yeah, under- I'm trying to think like, where would the ferry go from Southern Ireland to, so, to England? Yeah, they would, they would drive up. They had to drive up to Belfast. So it's like a two, three hour drive. And the ferry comes out of Belfast um, oh. from Belfast to Stranraer. Interesting. Um, yeah. So there's so, n- there's no ferries from Southern Ireland over to like Wales? I mean, there might be, but the one that we, we went to all the time was, yeah. Interesting. That I knew. Yeah, it was, that's, that's so yeah. fascinating. Again, another aspect of what Jack and I experienced that we'd never thought about because that wasn't part of our yeah. mission, unless you were going to the Isles in the northern part of Scotland, but yeah, very, very okay. few and far between for some of us. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. I love it. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't go imagine. Ahead. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah. I just couldn't imagine yeah, President Griffiths like with combining these two missions and <laughs> the stress that must have been on his plate and yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Couldn't imagine that. Yeah. Did you see a cultural difference at all between Scottish missionaries that you interacted with and Ireland missionaries as you got there too? Because we've heard that there was quite a difference. Yeah, there definitely was a little bit of a tension there, but um, it ended pretty quickly. Like, okay, you know, in my first area, and like I could, you know, I could get a little bit of the culture of like what an Irish missionary was versus the Scottish, but then like there was just such good unity that was happening and um so then it didn't become like such a thing anymore of, like oh you know so strict and, <laughs> and i remember president griffiths making a comment like some elder sister had a question and he's like this isn't the law of moses like <laughs> you know you follow the white handbook and <laughs> you know, kind of have a balance towards things so <laughs> it's like that's awesome you know yeah yeah. He had a big task to undertake Good. with, like you said, merging the missions and then merging the cultures of two very polar opposite missions from what we understood. But that's really cool to hear that you experienced that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good stuff. It's very good. Jared, we really appreciate you taking the time to come on here. Podcast not possible without participants such as yourself. Yeah, and well, thank you. like Zach said, we love referrals, so send them our way. <laughs> Absolutely, and, uh, and we want to express our love to you as our brother in in Scotland, and uh, we, we we just love these opportunities. Like Zach and I do this because we love it. Yeah. We, we really enjoy it. That's really neat. Yeah, it's, it's been a two year journey that we can't wait to see what year three looks like because there's just so many more amazing people to speak to about their experiences there in those wonderful, wonderful countries. Right. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. It's so cool. That you guys started this. I think this is awesome. Thanks. Well, we'll, we'll bid you cheerio, Jared. Yeah. yeah we love you, Jared. Yeah. Love you guys. Cheerio <laughs> brother. Have a good night. You too. Bye, Bye. now.